This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Hello, I'm Jeff. Hello, I'm Patrick. Oh, we're, we, we're dogless today. We are dogless today because it's half term. Oh, so I, can't, I only just going to go. This is Bella. I know, yeah, but she's not here today. Oh, so she's, yeah, because uh, I like it's it's written. Uh, I was going to say written in my contract, but I'm self-employed, so I don't have one. That I get into. I, I want to be introduced last. <laughs> After the dog. It's after the dog. Yeah, I'm lowest in the in the pecking order here. Um, yeah, we're going to start. Uh, hopefully, she doesn't get too much of a diva about it and tries to get her own contract where she's first. <laughs> That'd be awful. Probably be quite popular. Yeah, be well received. So probably would. Yeah, do. yeah. When she can introduce herself, then she can go first. <laughs> oh yeah. Does she? Does she? speak no no not in the oh, okay no she doesn't yeah. do any of that so no she's um yeah she's off this week because the family are all at home so she'll go off for some nice walks and things so uh i didn't want to bring her in and deny her of that so yes so i'm afraid we're bella lost today so oh, terrible had a bit of a week haven't we <laughs> well, but, uh, have we <laughs> yes yeah we've been a bit of a week so those of you who are here and tuning in, thank you very much for sticking with us. It's very nice of you. Yes. So, right then, I'm going to shock you. <gasps> I, I, my body's ready. Not a thing I normally buy particularly often. And when I do buy it, it's not normally a thing to say anything good about. Okay. White Dwarf. White Dwarf has gone and absolutely excelled itself so... By that, I mean Games Workshop, which again, sometimes it's, uh, it's hard to find a nice thing to say. So. <laughs> I mean, they produce lots of great models. They do. That we what love. We, what we do. And it's what? our job. <laughs> you know that, yes. Well, you know, I've been um, circling the idea lately of Combat Patrol. Mm. Because mainly um, my game and night with my bestie, Tim, is generally hard to get off the ground sometimes because we normally have about three and a half four hours and um we don't have the right really the right amount of space that we would like okay now there's a bit of a story here that um tim moved house a little while ago yeah right and when he told me he was moving house i gave him a very strict set of parameters about what his new house should have all right <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. I, I gave him a list. One of them was it shouldn't be any more than a thirty-minute commute for me. Oh, right. Right. Because because if I don't normally leave his house about half past twelve at night, if I'm, oh, you know, okay, if yeah. I'm getting home about one in the morning, it's a bit pushed it a bit too much. And also, it should have a relatively good hobby space because in his previous house, he had a garage in his garden which had an office in it. And we ended up with this really cool farmyard um, kitchen table that was massive. Yeah. And you could lay 40k out on it. Yeah. So not only did he get a house which didn't have the space for that sort of setup. Well, that's just... Shocking. Awful. Is the, shocking yeah. is the words you're looking yeah. for, Pat. I know yeah. the words you're looking for. It's shocking. <laughs> and then also, he um, went and bought this really, really, really <laughs> lovely and v something you wouldn't want to put too much on. Really beautiful glass dining room table lovely so, so there's a point in here somewhere yeah there is a point and the point is that going forward maybe the best thing for me and tim to do is play combat patrol oh right okay right yeah because he doesn't which, have the space for which all relates down right. to um poor new house management yes yes ultimately yes i didn't want to bring it up but i that, mean but, you it, know for speaking the truth you know he was a bit inconsiderate with his you, new house buying do you, i reckon like, if i'm gonna if we you know do a do a vowel rack and put the tinfoil hat on. Yes. Um, I think Games Workshop have manipulated the housing market. <laughs> they've, oh, made, so much... they've made houses more expensive. Yeah. And so you have all these big 40k armies and then you don't have the space to play them anymore. So <laughs> obviously what you have to do is buy another one of their smaller games with some new models and you know... then buy White Dwarf as well. Tim buying a smaller house possibly well, because a, they're way weirdly, more expensive a bigger house, but just not 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 with the right not with the dimensions i told him to get exactly so. and now you're buying white dwarf and now i'm buying so like well played games workshop i've got to be honest well played. When, i've got to be honest when you said i'm putting me i'm putting me tinfoil hat on 
I thought you were going to say that this has been like a very slow thing from Tim to slowly scale our friendship backwards. <laughs> I go, get a house that can't fit a gaming table in. It'll be yeah. less likely to come round. Yeah, yeah. Give it a year or two and we won't see him ever again. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But I'm persevering. So, no, I think Combat Patrol uh, is something that uh, I'm increasingly more interested in playing because yeah. you can set it up much quicker and you don't really need a table as big. And there's a whole host of things about it. But I've always been a bit, uh, you know, sort of 40K inside 40K. Do I want more rules? But I am starting to lean that way. And I'm especially leaning that way because I'm using this as my personal excuse to build up towards Combat Patrol Crute. So I have an excuse for buying them. Okay. Right. Because I can't have another army, but I can have another Combat Patrol. Okay, yeah. That, so yeah, that's my way of yeah, lying yeah. to myself. Yeah, Combat Patrols is fine. But what they've done is as we all pretty much know so far all combat patrols have been boxes that have already come out yeah uh, which are pretty much the same sort of boxes that were like the you know starter boxes or build an army box or whatever you want to call them yeah they were them and they sort of repurposed them and sort of went the combat patrol yeah. some of them have had a bit of a tweak so that the, the point balances are work out so the army should be roughly balanced I say, old boy, been up to anything interesting apart from all this futuristic shooting stuff? What do you mean futuristic, Jenkins? We're living in the present. Ah, yes, of course. Well, if you must know, I've been building myself a website on Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one website platform to stand out and succeed online. Whether you're just starting out or already established, Squarespace makes it easy to create a beautiful website, engage with your audience, and sell anything from products to content to time. All in one place. Well, I say, it sounds amazing, but even though I'm a cracking shot of the troll boy, I don't think I could possibly design my own website. Oh, nonsense. With Fluid Engine, a next-generation website design system from Squarespace, it's never been easier for anyone to unlock unbreakable creativity. Start with the best-in-class website template and customize every design detail with reimagined drag-and-drop technology for desktop or mobile. Get started with one of Squarespace's professional website templates with designs for every category and use. Then customize your look, update content, and add features to fit your unique needs. You can make any Squarespace template do what you want so your idea, brand, or business stands out online. Well, I say, it sounds too good to be true. Can I sell things? If you want to sell anything, Squarespace has got you covered. Sell your products with an online store. Whether you sell physical, digital, or service products, Squarespace has the tools you need to start selling online. Oh, by Jove, I might just give it a go, but where do I go to give it a go? Well, you just need to go to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash the painting phase to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. tally -ho. But what they've done in White Dwarf this month is it's the first one where they've gone and made a new one for Space Marines. You had to start there, basically, didn't they? Mm -hmm. Well, um, they've gone and made a new one. So I'm hoping, and if it's well received, that they what they're now going to start doing is going, here are combat patrols that aren't from a box. Right, okay. So, so they get going, official you, Yeah, you just rules. go official rules. You've got these miniatures at home, hopefully. Yeah. Uh, which I'll get to in a minute. And then you can start a new box. You can start a new army or squad patrol, whatever you want to call it. And not only did they put the data cards in there and give some flavor and then give also give a scenario and yeah. whatnot, which was really cool. They then also printed them again. So they gave you the cards for uh, objectives and abilities and also stratagems. Yeah. And then they also, very kindly, which they double-sided, they did cards for the actual squads, for the actual units within it. So you've got a librarian. I'm going to go with Zarius on that, who's a uh, Phobos librarian. On the back of him, you get Suppressor Squad, and then you get Lieutenant Solarian, and then on the back, you have Infiltrator Squad. Okay. Right, so the fact that they've done these, and they've done them in the right size for the data slates for your normal box, I thought yeah. was really cool. And I just really think this is a really a good step in the right direction. If they, Because Combat Patrol felt to me a bit like, it's an excuse for a new way to sell boxes and we won't really support it. It'll sort of slide by the wayside. But this is sort of mm. suggesting 
They aren't. And good. Well done, Games Workshop. Gold star for you. <laughs> Maybe a certificate that your mum can put on your fridge. Um, be in the post in yeah. uh, three to five business years. <laughs> years. <laughs> yeah. Get your mum to pick a nice fridge magnet and it can go on the fridge. Yeah. But, well, um, well done, James. Yeah. So, but I'm really impressed with that because I thought, um, hopefully this is a thing now and it keeps breathing life into it. I think because there's, you know, especially Space Marines, they have so many miniatures to go. The Combat Patrol is basically the contents of Leviathan. Mm. The Marines was a bit, you know, it didn't strike me as particularly imaginative. But this, and especially being all like Phobos based, uh, I think's really, really cool. The downside to it is, and there has to be, is that sadly they're making a big deal, putting them on the cover of the magazine and everything. Out of the suppressor squads, you still don't make them accessible for people to buy as their own units. I understand why, if I remember rightly. So, why much, is the why? I think the why is they're on a sprue with other stuff. Oh, oh, right. Like the, um, or is it the Death Guard where you with get half, half, a, plague, half yeah. a plague marine on the thing? Yeah, <laughs> on the tank sprue. No, on the, right? no, it's on the sprue with uh, Poxwalkers. Yes. Because they did Pox, weirdly, they did a Poxwalker sprue because Poxwalkers have been in a box already. And then they went, oh, and now there's this. Mm. And then it's got a marine art off on it. And, you know, and bless them, every couple of times a week the death guard page on facebook there'll be some new new player bless him who comes on <laughs> and goes well we've got half a marine and then the, you'll always end up with the um the idris elba gif of uh, reset the clocks from, oh uh, from pacific rim yeah you know and yeah. i always feel like they get piled on a little bit and i always feel a bit sorry for them you know because someone has to go not the most recent starter set, and not the one before that, but the one before that, they were... Oh, is you know, it that long ago? Yeah, they were in there, and there was half a Marine on there because the other half a Marine was on another sprue, and yeah, yada, yada, yada. So, um, yes, so I think that's the problem with the suppressors, if I remember rightly, is I think they share a sprue with something else. It's that long ago without I built them. I can't remember what they shared a sprue with if that is the case, but I think it is. So it is a bit of a pain that you're, you're making a big deal out of the gear. These guys are not everybody's got them or can gain access to them mm. easily or cheaply is probably the main one. Well, there we go. That's that's the other, because they you can get them, you can get suppressors in a, another combat patrol? Or? Yeah, they were in, I think they were in a, a, a thing that wasn't, well, it's now combat patrol, isn't it? But it was like, you know, Whatever, they, yeah, whatever, whatever they used to call yeah. the other sets. They were in there, it was like a faux boss set. Okay. And they were in there. But I don't know whether that's now gone the way of the dodo or not. I do oh, not know. I'm gonna I'm gonna have a Please Google. Do. Yeah, that'd, have be, a Google. that'd be very kind of you. But do you know, and then and and also well done to White Dwarf, is because I then thought, you know, I don't buy this very often. And then I started looking through it and gone, do you know what? With this whole new battle bunker thing of trying to encourage you to to, to build armies and mm. get stuff painted and, you know, get into it with your mate and tick your little boxes off of things you've done. And I had to go, do you know what? It's currently, as much as I like to have a moan, it's not bad at the moment, White Dwarf. I was quite I quite quite impressed with it. And I normally am a bit of a person who sort of goes, ooh, you know. Um, I used to buy it more often when I shopped in Sainsbury's. But due to the cost of living crisis, and they don't sell it in Aldi. No, <laughs> no. It's not even in the middle aisle with the chainsaws and the, <laughs> <laughs> the chainsaws. That would be appropriate, and, and wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know that thing. You know, I went into saying, I went into Aldi to buy a pint of milk and a loaf of bread, and they came out with a petrol chainsaw and uh, the thing I love, a fourteen-inch plasma television. Yeah, that, and white dwarf. But sadly, they don't do that. It's the thing I love the most about Aldi is you can, you know, you obviously you can get the food that you that you generally want but you could go do you sell knives and forks i could eat no <laughs> oh but i'll buy this drill set <laughs> and this like gas heater yeah and a chainsaw and then kids toys yeah um and there must be a reason for it like they must go no we we don't make enough money on cutlery or, or something <laughs> along those lines but it's just such like a in in every like big supermarket, you know. I like the idea that in in Aldi they go, we don't sell cutlery, but we do sell all the kit to make it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, my we've got a smelting set over there. <laughs> Little we, Timmy's make your own first cutlery of, set. We sell blocks of steel on the other aisle. 
you know, but uh, yeah, so it is. A <laughs> yeah. Would you like to buy a forge yeah. <laughs> and an anvil? <laughs> you, know the one that freak, you know the one that freaks me out? Because obviously, you know, me and my wife have quite busy days. She's a college lecturer. Uh, you know, I have a, run my own business and I pick the kids up and I'm, you know, basically always run around like a maniac. The fact that um, they only now sell frozen mashed potato at Christmas. Really? Like nobody else meets mashed potato the rest of the year. Oh, I love right. it normally because you just throw it in a throw it in a bowl, stick it in the microwave, and you know it goes with sausages or fish fingers or something for the kids, and you know, and it's great. And it's like it disappears and comes back roughly every November, and then I start buying it like a blooming end of the world hoarder. Oh, you know, like a, <laughs> right. Okay. Oh, wow. What do they call them people? Preppers. Preppers. Doomsday yeah, I'm preppers. Like, I'm like yeah. a mashed potato yeah. prepper. <laughs> I come home and my wife will be like, I can't fit in an instance full of mashed potato. And I'm at the point to go, yeah, because you know what? Come January the 8th, it will disappear. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can imagine like co- coming over to yours maybe and, and just seeing, you'd be like, Jeff, why are you building an extension? <laughs> oh, so we can fit some more freezers in. Yeah. Just why, for- why do you need that? <laughs> mashed potato. Because you um, know what I mean? I like to, I, I love mashed as much as the next person, but you know what? Standing at the sink, peeling it. Yeah. Peeling potatoes. So, yes, yeah, so, sadly, that I... I'm going to start calling you Bodger. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so, like I say, I don't normally buy... I don't buy white dwarf as often now that I don't go into Sainsbury's as much, which is generally where I get it. But I've got to be honest and say that I haven't looked through this one. I go, oh, do you know what? I think I've missed this a little bit. It's not bad. And also, look at that. Oh, your friend of mine, Mr. Stephen Box. Oh, his wow. Own little He's starting to get his own little regular spots in there, and he uh, great. He's talking about how to play the game, which I should probably really do a good job of reading because I'm still a bit rubbish at it. But um, <laughs> <laughs> but yes, so well done, Games Workshop. I thought that was a good issue, and especially the idea that you want to promote Combat Patrol more has <laughs> really really touched one of my happy nerves. Oh, wonderful! Which is a euphemism. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> So quite pleased with that. <laughs> Point of the doll where Games Workshop <laughs> touched your happy nerve. <laughs> oh, oh, we're cancelled. Yes, um, indeed. I'm trying to navigate this stupid website. Oh, good luck. Um, oh, so this is going to be our longest show ever. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, 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 you can't search um, Suppressor. suppressors. No, of course it you just can't, comes no. up with a book which is called Successors. <laughs> um, and... The various combat, I, I give up. I don't care. Um, <laughs> don't care enough. Enough to find it. Like when I've got free time, um, when we're not on on currently recording a podcast, I will check. I, if you type in suppressors into Google, it just comes up with eBay and there's cutouts yes. of the sprues. So yeah, they're clearly yeah. on in with something else. I imagine it's a was it it's start collecting or something like that. I don't yeah, know. they've been in a start collecting box. Yeah. Um, they've been in a start collecting box and um, that. Yeah, that's where they really started their life and they've not really gone anywhere from that. Mm. So, yes. So, moving on, uh, some Games Games Workshop have announced some new Space Moon releases. Cars, it's been at least a week since there's been any more. We've got the return, the return of the Terminator Captain. We've return of the Terminator Captain. Yes, so they've done a new Terminator Captain, which I don't massively like. I, no, I thought the, the push fit version in Leviathan looked a bit sexier. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I understand that the push fit version comes with him having to stand on a Carnifex's head or Screamer Killer, whichever you prefer. I'd chop that off. Are. Yeah, and then just put him on a different base if you want. Plenty of people have, ha- have done that. But um, the problem with him was is he didn't come with a lot of options for being a Terminator captain. He just came mm. with a sword and a gun. Yeah. And so the new one, to be fair to it, comes with uh, combi weapon, comes with yep. power fist. Yeah. So a I, melter. Yeah. Looks like. Yeah. So I get why they've done it. Yeah. Um, I just think it's a bit of a shame that he just, I don't know, he just feels like he's lacking something a little bit to me. I'm not quite sure what, what it is. I think really it's the lack of a cloak. I think he just doesn't look quite grandiose enough to me. Yeah. Do you think that's what it is? You're looking at him right now, aren't you? I am indeed. I think it's it's his head, like that, like chin strap. Yeah, it just it reminds me of RoboCop. Yes, um, which they, to be fair, all the Terminators have that. I think it's meant to be like the bottom of almost like like the the bottom of the helmet. I think. Yeah, but it, it is it is a bit it is a bit 
Robocop to be fair mm. I or, like um, I do like the uh, like the half like the, the like gas the mask yeah. sort of like just the breather on I think that's really cool I mean I I love I absolutely love the new Terminators oh they're fantastic I, I thoroughly enjoy painting them I think I think they're brilliant and I was um, and God knows you, you've, you've painted, yeah, I've painted, painted quite lately. a few yeah um <laughs> And I think I think it's like the lack of trim, like what well, maybe because someone was saying like oh, I was like I don't know why I really enjoy painting them so much, and maybe because I'm having a like a airbrush like foray into that, yeah. And you can kind of like I don't know there is that like what there that wide open space, the shoulder pads and the big um, like you know the big legs and all that kind of stuff, and I'm like oh like you can get your gradients in there and yeah. you, you've got room to experiment like there's not they're not just have they don't just have loads of crap on them which is interesting because the terminator chaplain i wish he had more crap on him <laughs> um so i realize how contradictory i'm i'm being here but um yeah i think they're brilliant and then yeah i was chatting to some mates and i was like i really enjoy painting them and they were like no trim and i was like Ah, maybe. maybe yeah and yeah. all the other thing as well not as much in the way of like not as as busy with like the overlap and plates on their mm. armor as much i know they've got the hit the the hip plates but everything's just a bit bigger i think it's just allowed getting your brush in and around stuff is yeah and also i think also generally one of the very good things about terminators is you generally don't get any of um there's no arms across chests everything is a yeah everything's open everything's open, yeah because i think does help because one one thing I I learned from uh, from Mr. Peach was if you're doing painting tutorials, people would quite often say like, "Oh, could you show with could you show one with a gun over the chest? Why does everybody pick open arms?" Mm -hmm. And it's because it's just easier to demonstrate the techniques. It looks better yeah. on camera, and sometimes I think some of the Terminators occasionally, as we found, like you have a hand pointing out. And then you rotate it in such such a way. You're like, oh, I'm going to paint this eye, and you're like, no, you're not. Yeah. Like, you can't. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to let you see that. Yeah. Um, so, so that that's like, and yeah, I think that's part of it as well because they're always like, here's my massive fist, here's my gun. Yeah. Like, there's no Terminator holding anything a, a gun over the no, chest or anything. Is is there? Like, yeah. The whole idea is them is the suit is meant to be sturdy enough that they can cope with the weight of anything in you know well what well it's not even holding it in one hand with things like um assault um assault cannons and things like that and flamers it's sort of just yeah. almost bolted to them isn't it yeah Pretty much yeah so i think that's the uh, they don't need the other hand to be because the whole idea is that they can shoot guns and also be quite nasty in close combat isn't it so you know you can't be punchy if you need to carry something with two hands and i think yeah i think the bigger the big example of that is the size of that plasma cannon that they give the Dark Angels Terminator. Oh, yeah, which yeah. Which is huge, isn't it's it? It's quite so, substantial, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, if you can carry that one-handed, you can carry pretty much anything give else. The, like. uh, it's interesting, though, like, with 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 that, because it's massive. It's, like, it's huge. And I was just going to say, like, oh, we could give the Desolation Squad a run for the money, but <laughs> yeah. on the Terminators, it, it, it looks in proportion. And it, that's why it, it looks weird it, on the Desolators. It fits, whereas the Desolators, maybe, like, the shapes and everything, they were just a bit... Well, I think they, just a bit I weird. Think, as they? everyone always said, I think they 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 dropped the ball. There is the fact that they should have made them as a gravis unit. Yeah, yeah. And I, I wonder with the Terminators coming out now. Oh, apologies. Um, if Gravis will get any more love? Do you think Gravis is kind of a bit a bit I dead now? Yeah, as, as Gravis potentially hit a bit of a dead end, I think it may have done because you think, well, you've made them with heavy. You've made them with better bolters yeah. you've made them with super duper super duper melters yeah and you've made flying ones you've made captain ones yeah you know you've made you know you've sort of made an apothecary one you know because it's think, in interesting like with the suppressors that they haven't they've just gone like three man squads it's still locked in a sprue with something else yeah and that came out when? Long time ago, yeah, yeah, they, yeah. Um, and they've never gone back, and never and, gone back. And then they've made the assault intercessors like Primaris now, like the jetpack yeah. dudes. Like uh, they're just gone. Yeah, well, I do sometimes wonder whether they think is it financially worth, yeah, um, making them again onto their own sprue. Some, you know, you could you could argue that maybe 
Whereas Games Workshop does this thing of, some people accuse me going, they're not very good, they're not selling, mm. let's make them better. Yeah. And then they, they, you know, people will more, people will buy them. I wonder yeah. whether they go do the other way going, we don't want to make them again. Just keep the rules really poor and no one will want them. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Whether yeah. they are actually on yeah. some level nobbling some of their own stuff that goes. It's yeah. like yeah. the desolators have got re- went from being amazingly good, which yeah. was like everyone buy them. They're they super were f- duper. phenomenal, weren't yeah. they? Yeah. You might not look like you might not like how they look, but they work well in game. And now everyone's universally slagged them off. Yeah. And they went, yeah overpriced them stop them being in 10 man units only let them be in 5 man units and I wonder whether they're, they've gone you know shoot them dead you know? yes yeah yeah they've taken them out the back yes I, you yeah. know so I think um, yeah so I don't know maybe maybe we you know Games Workshop who are accused of uh, hyping their models back up for sales maybe they do kill some of their models because they think we don't want to go back and make any more well we already know they've been manipulating the housing market well, so, which obviously, so yes. maybe with you know hat back on <laughs> the suppressors they've given them rules so people google suppressors yeah. where can i get them and yeah. increase them sales i think what they've probably done is probably you've probably not. done some really good job of uh getting some sales for troll trader <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah individual probably bits and people yeah. on ebay yeah. people on ebay have been trying to get rid of them for ages and then that white dwarf argument caught, like, the article came out like yes yeah thank yeah. you so much absolutely and then uh the other releases i saw essentially it's kind of the Leviathan box is being separated up with the sprues. Yes, it's being chopped up into bits. Yeah, to be sold off. yeah. Yes. Which I think... Um, Which is interesting, because I think... I thought they would have... Because we've got multi-part... Um, Stern guards. Stern guards. We've yes. got those. So there's uh, Knifey McKnifington and yes, uh, the Apothecary... Combi Weapon Lieutenant. Yeah. <laughs> Sir Stabbington. Yes. Um, I think I'll, I'll call him from now on. And the Apothecary Biologists, which are on the same sprue yes, as the Stern Guard, right? So, yeah. so you could now buy... What sexy name have they given that? Um, Heroes of the Chapter. Heroes of the Chapter. But then we already have a Heroes of the Chapter. Which is... I've got that box somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I'm going to see, because that's like... <laughs> Good job, that's not on camera forever. Um, oh, where are they? Oh, no, so Stone Guard Veteran Squad. Oh, used what you've got. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. there is, yeah, the one which has got the um, standard bearer and the yeah, heavy yeah. bolter and all the rest of it. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah, so they're the thing. They're the other heroes of the. Uh, I thought there was they a. Com- they might be company. Oh, oh yeah, because yeah. it's all the guys. It's all the really cool dudes from Indomitus, isn't it? Yes. The is what I'm thinking of. Yeah, that's been around yeah. for a while. Yes, but then the funny thing is about company that was heroes they, or something. But they released in Indomitus. They um, uh, was no, it wasn't. I, I don't. I think it was even earlier than that. I think it was the one before that was Dark Imperium had came with the Space Marine standard bearer. Yeah. And then they released that as a bit of a gang of them on a, because they were all yeah. on a sprue. Yeah. But then they went back and made standard bearer again on his own. And then they made standard bearer again now for this new box, which is the one that comes with the captain and all the rest of it. And then also, let's not forget, there's also Blade Guard standard bearer, who is from the last one. Love it. One, the one who's got the big skeleton on a stick. But, so they've done this, is now they've released this. So you've got in... This is your Leviathan one, so it comes with your Apothecary Biologist, it comes with Stabby McStabbington, and it comes with Stern... See how quickly it takes off? Uh, It comes with Stern Guards. But, and it's a bit like, do you know what? Well done for putting it out. Some of me thinks without sound and awful, and if you were one of the people that didn't manage it, or uh, didn't want it, couldn't afford it, whichever it was, it's a bit like, surely everyone got one of these. Dave, to be fair to them, Element Element Games has still got hundreds, yeah. (laughs) Element Games, do you know, if if Stockport ever went underwater, I think they could use theirs as a flood barrier. Yeah. They've got enough of them. Yeah. Yeah, So, you know, if you you still want to, and I think, I'm not sure, but I think the last time I might have been in Warhammer World, I think I've still seen them in there. Yeah. So Leviathan's still knocking around. So if you're trying to buy Leviathan in bits, probably going to cost you far more money to to do that of buying you know in fairness marines and whatnot yeah but this thing is a bit strange i think because i think a 
the stand guard on it are nice enough, but they, they have no options. Not that the options hugely matter because a combi weapon now is just a combi weapon. It doesn't have any flavor. But these give you... Some of them have bolters, some of them have combi weapons, and that's it. You don't get a say in the matter. Yeah. And one of them has a heavy bolter, and you don't get any say in the matter to give him the heavy bolter or not. He just comes with it. And you think, you know, the efforts of doing this, you think, would it have not... Would it have not just been better to just make a new Stabby McStabbington and also a new Biologus? Because you think, especially because yeah. if you went back and done Stabby again, you wouldn't have to give him, well, I know you don't have to give him, but he wouldn't come with a, like the new captain, he wouldn't come with a Terminator, uh, a Terminator-centric base. Mm. He'd just come with a flat base. Yeah. Uh, of, well, a tactical rock of some description. And... Um, and the bio just could have had another model because that's how it used to be, as is shown with the new captain, is some stuff doesn't ever make it out the box. Mm. It just ends up with a new one. So I, th- I think maybe with their... Because every, everyone's sort of the rumour mill about Workshop at the minute is their distribution is, is kind of... It's all robots now, but yeah. the robots aren't as good as humans and it's all a bit slow and a bit rubbish and they've moved to East Midlands Airport yes. and lots of issues like it, it is bizarre like I would like another uh, Mr. Stabbington hmm. because I think the model's really fun yes. um, and I, I had great fun painting it um, but they've got that sprue it's the easier option but yeah. then in the box it's going to have to be split somehow isn't it yeah. Like, they're not going to sell it like well, that. No, no, they'll have to cut it some, <laughs> yeah. somewhere. I don't um, know. So, but maybe that's that's easier than doing it the other way. Yeah. And they're like, oh, we still need to get new releases out. See, It'll still sell. Because the thing is, because what that new captain, whether you like him or not, what that new captain has effectively done has shot the one in Leviathan, Stone Cold Dead. Yes. Because he doesn't come with any options. Yeah. And you think he... and Because let's remember, which is interestingly is that in the Leviathan box, he came on a sprue of his own. He so did. So it's not like he was having to share a space and that's why he's not... Because you, you can still get him in the new... like the, the It's been out for a while. Yeah, like he's the, in, start, he's, the starter, starter sets. Bo- starter sex, the and there's a the combat there's the patrol. Combat search, patrol, which so is yeah. just Terminators, right? So, yeah, so he's yeah. available in that in that way, but because of his, his lack of options, he's not the guy on the shelf. Hmm in the individual box it'll be this fella do you think the you could put the back of the push bit one and glue that and with the cape do you think you could um, well if you're smart enough, if, you, you know, if you could be, yeah. Yeah, or sure at the very least just, I, I think it would be that hard to carve off at least you know it would the dimensions would pretty much be be right but yeah I don't know whether I like this thing of regurgitation because you know if you especially say you went my army doesn't suit stand guards Okay, but yeah. I didn't get Leviathan, but yeah. I wouldn't mind Stabby, and I wouldn't mind Scientist Boy. Yeah, I'm going to end up with Stand Guard that I'm paying for. But knowing as well, the other thing is knowing that if you'd have bought Leviathan, that all of this would have been a much cheaper option, and you could have sold the term, the Tyranids off. So mm. I, I'm not a big fan of this. I do think going forward, I know it's easy for me to say, man sitting here who is, doesn't work in this as a job, but just. Going forward, Games Workshop, can you not just plan this a bit better? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? You've had, this is like the third time you've done this now, you know, because like, go, go back to Dark Imperium, there's people out there going, why have I got half a Plague Marine? So, you know, I don't know. And yeah, I'm sure there's cost and getting how much of it to fit in the box and all the rest of it. I understand it, but you think, surely to some degree, you're just making your own life more difficult going forward, you know? Mm. And if you've had to go out and buy this instead of buying Leviathan, then, you know, God help you. But, um, yeah, yeah, I don't I don't know. Because uh, I was a little bit, uh, maybe not surprised, the the um, Ballistus Dreadnought, that's getting its own release. Yes. Again, that's on its own sprue. It already exists. They can just package it up separately yeah. and, and push it out the door. Mm-hmm. And there's not, I guess, because it looks like it is going to be the push fit one. It is the push fit one, yeah. 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 And and I guess there's not... No, more, no, more, no different weapon options for it. No. And you think, and in a weird way, yeah. I knew that was going to happen because everything now that Games Workshop going forwards has done is if it's not on the data slate, the model won't come with it. Yeah. 
you know, and vice versa. Because they yeah, because of Chapter House and all yeah, that sort of so, stuff. So yeah. this whole thing now, if it's not on there, they don't get it. If there isn't a data slate for them anymore, they're dead. So, you know, I wasn't shocked that, or, you know, who knows, you know, I, I, you know, go further down the line, I don't know, but, I, you know, but that's it. You go, well, that, there's going to be no surprises when the Ballista Streadnaught comes out. It's going to have last cannons and it's going to have missile launchers because yeah. that's all the data slate gives you. Yeah. So, so, yeah, so why? And I guess, like, in 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 defense of Games Workshop, perhaps. Um, I mean, I know I've seen some amazing kit bashes with dreadnoughts, but like they are limited with yeah the posing and and all that sort of stuff. So perhaps having the push fit one that's locked into that, you know, is a bit disappointing. But it's not horrendously no. different. Like I'd prefer both legs stood flat on the floor. Yeah. Well, you got a tactical rock, Timmy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yes. And there we go. No, and and the Inferno Squad as well. So again, you know that that is like a just taken straight out of the box. I think my the only issue with the push fit uh, in Inferno Squad was some of the casting on that. The ones that I had, um, perhaps there there would have been a reason for it, but some of the gun handles in the it's very 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 pernickety. Yeah. Some of the gun handles in the pouches. Um, just weren't molded like it wasn't a gun handle and I'd say, I've seen people online with the same issue and they paint them as bananas because uh, <laughs> they just it, it, they, they just it's just like bloop that's not a shape yeah. um, and some of the inside of the legs and that kind of stuff which like, you, you would yeah. think for an individual for an individual squad in a box at the price it will probably be you'd expect a little bit better yes I'm quite forgiven of push fit because you know it's never going to be made quite as well. Although, don't get me wrong. I thought the push for Terminators is, yeah, and, and were exceptional. On, yeah, they, they are. The Terminators, push for Terminators are great. Everything on this new sprue is really nice. Um, but general, but they do just have little issues here and there. And I do think the Inferno squads, if I was buying them and they were my only ones of them was, was in an individual box, I'd feel a little bit hard done by, I think. Yeah, I think and that's Especially because the problem being as well, as I understand it, it's a flamer. How, how far can you go with it? They, it, It's not a very inspiring kit to look at. It's pretty much other than the captain, and the other captain, other than the sergeant who's drawing his knife and then the alternate version of him, which is like <laughs> lobbing, a, lobbing grenades, a grenade. Yeah. They, 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 they're not very inspiring to look at. They all look, the other eight all pretty much look like the same guy. Yeah, yeah, they're, yeah, they're bit, quite, you know. quite sort of standard. So, yeah. yeah, so that's a bit. Um, um, the dismantling of Leviathan, I don't think has been particularly, is particularly great. I understand it's a necessary evil, but it's not been particularly great. But... Good job you've done it anyway, because I'm sure there's somebody out there who needs some bits and bobs out of it. But I do think if you didn't get Leviathan, but you really wanted Stabby McStabbington, yeah. you'd have got him from somewhere else by now. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, moving on, the thing, I another another gold star on the fridge Oh, for Games Workshop, how quickly they've got the contents of the new kill team out. Very good point. Yeah. I'm really, really pleased with that. Yeah. I was very surprised to see them because me too. The previously it's taken six months or like I think the the longest yeah. when the, I think uh, you know probably some behind the scenes like bits and bobs going on, but because that sold out like so fast and all of the the scalping stuff seems to be quite yeah sort of up there at the minute, especially with like um siege of, uh, is it end of death or whatever it was the 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 volume three book oh yes, um, yes 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 its name escapes me yeah um, I, don't get, I don't get involved in all of that stuff it's like yeah yeah, yeah. um so yeah end of like yeah the end end of the whole series and then yeah. it was like ah, everyone scabbed it yeah. and then to the point where games workshop went ah we're cancelling all those orders and know, it's going yeah. back up for sale I um, know, that was a really bold move by them yeah. i was really impressed with them because in the past it's always looked like they didn't care uh, yeah they just couldn't give a monkeys as long as they'd started without x amount of thousand and within a couple of you know days pretty much with new books yeah. they haven't got a couple of thousand left they couldn't give a monkeys, but they seem to be anything that's limited release because it, it happens a lot with trainers i think doesn't it that's oh, Christ, that's yeah. where i first sort of became more aware of it and anything that's limited release that sells out that is popular is gonna attract people that aren't 
in there going, oh, I can make some profit on this. Yeah. Um, which, which is a shame. Um, but uh, yeah, I, d I don't know. Uh, like, I don't know how to solve the problem. No. Um, that's well, Games Workshop seem to have figured it out by just burning everything down. <laughs> <laughs> But then could the scalpers just buy them again? Like I think what they're potentially doing is I think they might also be uh limiting it to one per person. Oh, okay, yeah, that makes Maybe, sense. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So uh yeah, but I thought that was a bold move from them and, and good on them. But um yeah, so it's nice to see the scouts out so early. The kill teams, yes. Yes. Uh, especially for the thing that um I quite like is that generally a lot of the kill teams are are designed to be because of the nature of kill team, they're um, they're generally designed to be um, pretty much like a ten man squad. Yeah, you know, some of them you can have more if you're in guardsmen, you can have a few more. But the idea that they are designed to be a ten man squad, but uh, with both the striking scorpions and the scouts, they and I can I know this firsthand with the scouts because thank you to lovely, lovely, lovely Andrew Gibson who kindly gave me the scout half of that box as a Christmas present, which is extraordinarily kind of him. Um, they are designed to be two five-man squads or a ten-man squad. Yeah. And that is very much Games Workshop and looking at their alternate life. Oh, in, in 40K. In 40K, because scouts can go out as two five-man squads. So it's... this. Some people will grumble and go for the price of it. I've just got the same sprue twice, which you have which is absolutely true. You have got the same sprue twice. But I think um, for 40K, I think that's quite important to be able to have that, oh, okay. that option, to be able to do that, you know. So, um, yeah, so I was generally quite pleased at the scouts and, you know, and also for the Eldar players. Um, yeah. Pleased them to get their striking scorpions quite quickly because there'll be plenty of people who really desperately want new ones for their army but don't want to play kill team. And I think yeah. there's nothing worse, especially if you can't get them in stock. They must be, you know, how much of a pain in the backside it must have been if you were um, an Imperial Guard player and knew that there was new Kassikin out there and you couldn't lay your hands on them. Yeah, the, yeah, the, right yeah, the, cas the, the Kassikin took ages to come out, didn't they? they? Did. Yeah, uh, yeah. And then whenever they did, they were on the shelf about two minutes and then they yeah, were gone. Yeah. So again, the supply and demand, they took ages to come out and then the supply and demand for them. Yeah, yeah. Keep, and RBTs is, seems to be similar. RBT seems to be similar, getting a little bit better. Um, yeah. I've got a whole thing going on with RBCs because I'm trying to do everything with RBCs is I want to make them so that they're Necromunda proof yeah I want to make them so that they're kill team proof and I also want to make them so that they're 40k proof because you can have them as agents of the Imperium <laughs> oh right okay so basically to be able to make all the options it looks like I'm going to end up with three, 30 bloody RBCs just to create the options um, I have got a cool plan though yeah for a potentially for a future, so don't hold me to it, but for a, a potentially for a, a, a later video, I want to get the Tauros. Yes. And I want to take it from being a Palatine and Forces and turn it into a Arbites vehicle. Yeah. And what I'm going to do is for the spared ones that I'm not going to use, I'm thinking of sticking all the riot shields along the sides of the along the sides of the vehicle. Yeah. So it looks like that, you know, when they get somewhere, the guys can just run up and grab a shield off the side of it. I thought it looked quite cool. Yeah. So um, so that'll be nice that them things that I've got left over, I might have a, a useful... Yes, because I want to... I quite like the idea, just for narrative games, I like the idea that the Marines or, you know, whoever, the Marines turn up uh, somewhere to deal with something that's going on and the Arbites are already in the thick of trying to do their best. Yeah. So the idea that you can field them alongside each other is quite cool. So, yeah, so I might end up with 30 of them. <laughs> Just to make, just to make like fair every option really, which is a bit of a shame. But yeah, so yeah, so I think um, I hopefully with kill team going forward, this persists. That um, that would be lovely. That they get out quickly because you know how many people, and I know you're one of them. How many people must be chomping at the bit at the idea of being able to make night lords? Yeah, you know. Yeah. So you know, we go. Oh, there's a night lords kit, but it's going to be six months before you can lay your hands I, yeah, on. Yeah, I, I can't the wait. FOMO of that is awful. Yeah, you know? yeah. Because they look really good. And yes. again, the same for then the game. Then the game. The the same for the mandrakes is that there is going to be dark eldar players out there that desperately want newer ones for their army. Because I don't think I would buy the kill team box because I don't no. like the mandrakes enough. I don't no. think I would have a use for them, um, and. I understand that there'll be people out there that do. 
that's absolutely great. I would just want the separate box of Night Lords, yeah, mm -hmm. um, and and make the uh, like the multicultural skin cloak. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like I love, I love Games Workshop. Like they were like, right, we need to make sure that that you know different skin tones are represented on the box art. And then someone went, even on the skin cloak, yes, <laughs> especially on the skin cloak. Um, these <laughs> these people murder <laughs> indiscriminately. They they don't see race. They just see people that don't need skin. <laughs> That's a meeting a, I would have loved a, to have been it's in. It's a very strange hill to die on, isn't it? <laughs> but, you know, I, like, I understand they it. They murder equally. Yes, you yes. Know? Well, because, uh, crikey, like, if it was just white skin, yeah. you know, then they'd be like, ooh, and then it, or if it was just brown skin, you know, that it, it, that would be very, very bad. Yes. Um, so, so I can understand why they went, okay, they have skin cloaks, that's not an issue. Because it's it's Which just the bad different side people. Is it could make it could make if you if you um, if you did them with just Caucasian skin, mm. you could potentially could be looking at the other way around and go, God, you know what? White people really need to learn to run faster. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Not doing a very good job of staying alive. No, you know? no, you know? oh dear. You know? <laughs> You know, look at me, the size of me. I'm just a skin cloak on my own. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't run fast. I'd easily be done. They just okay, go, oh, yeah. we'll get half a platoon out of him. That's it. So I will I will get a Night Lord and then I will paint the skin cloak all white <laughs> and then copy your tattoos. Copy my tattoos, yeah. of which there is many. And yeah. Just go, just, yeah. go, and go, just one guy. That's, that's <laughs> just, just Jeff. Jeff. <laughs> Just try and freehand. I, I'm just, Jeff was here. Yeah, I'm, here I'm, I'm here to keep. I'm, I'm here to keep Night Lords happy. <laughs> I don't like them. To, I don't like the idea of them to overwork themselves. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's really cool. And also as well, um, nice to see that Imperial Legionalis. Is that right? I never pronounced that. Right. Um, Legiononus. Legionalis. <laughs> Imper Legion Imperialis I'm now yeah, looking over your shoulder yeah, it's yes, right there, there. We go. Well, yeah. and I see that still I just had visions of that really dropping off quick mm. or oh, nice to see that the solar auxiliary is being done for it which is cool yep. uh, nice to see that at roughly the same sort of time they're dealing with them we're seeing the hints of them now coming out for um, coming out for Horus Heresy as well Yes, which is good because yeah. Horus Heresy I was and it could just and it's nothing, and probably Games Workshop have gotten it right, and plenty of people who play it probably getting it, love it the way it has been. But I am really, really impatient. And already I was like, God, I'm bored of just seeing Space Marines getting released for this about every two weeks. Mm. Although, don't get wrong, some extraordinarily nice Space Marines. Yeah, they do, they do look really, really lovely. Yeah. I love the fact that they're keeping them separate by keeping the scales very different. Yeah. But it also massively annoys me because every time I look and I go, oh, that's really good, I could convert that up and I go, oh, no, I can't because he's. He's in real life terms about three foot two short to be. Oh right, you know, okay. Running along as a Primaris, you know. Yeah. But they are some really really nice models in there. So um, yeah. But I'm glad to see that they they're going to start getting around, and then hopefully again because I do I do like never going to collect them because it looks like too much painting and too much money. But I do like Adeptus Mechanicus. Yeah. So I'm hoping that they will join the uh, that fight. Yeah. Quite soon as well so yes so i think um i think they've been uh, i think they've been good boys of late yeah games workshop. yeah I've quite, i mean like i've been quite pleased old world has been i think ha hasn't affected us because we haven't bought it no um but the rumors the rumors the rumors uh, oh, that no, i heard I'm was that, well that um part of the reason why it's been very difficult to get a hold of is because someone slashed the forecast in half. Oh, nice. um, and they were sort of like, eh, I don't think we're really going to sell as much as we had planned to. And then you go, oh, you, you don't think you're going to sell this game that you've been hyping up for like 
two, three years that yeah. already has a massive fan base and that all have armies already. You yeah. don't think that's going to go particularly yeah. well? I always think. And then know. it has, and like it was. I, I'm not sure if it's changed, but a couple of weeks ago, you you couldn't even buy the rule book. No. Um, well, you know why you couldn't buy the rule book? Because because lots of people went. I only need to buy the rule book. I've got all of that at home. <laughs> <laughs> The opening, seeing the box, like LVO, like um, they they were selling them, and the the juxtaposition of new sprue versus old sprue yeah. was was really interesting. Yeah, How, just seeing that direct comparison um, with the the like the skeleton like the skeleton horses, like I could fit my hand through gaps in that sprue. Yeah, and then you look at the new one, and it's so much more three dimensional and packed with bits, and it's like. The difference in I understand that that will be like you know the technology is developed and the way that they design things and all that kind of stuff but seeing oh that's like what 20 30 year old plastic and yeah. then and then the new stuff uh, directly side by side was was really cool the the bit that uh, my man Tim was complaining about is the fact that the rule book comes with the rules for the um it comes with the rules for the armies that are in the boxes. Yeah, but then, but, but then you need another. Then you need another book for the rest of the stuff that's in that army, as well. Oh wait, so the the rule book only contains the rules for the specific models that are in yes. the box. If I if he explained it to me correctly. Oh right, okay. Oh, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not the world's big. I don't have the world's biggest interest in uh, in the old world. So I apologise. I might have been slightly zoning out. But um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not about multiracial skin cloaks. Don't care. No, um. no not, not that at all. So uh, yeah. So, um, but he was explaining to me that you um, you have to do start uh, if you want to do a bit more with them for like armies of renown and all the rest of it. You have to go and get. Oh right, okay. More you have to go and buy more books. Yeah, because um, because uh, Tim is currently on a mission to paint up two armies. Yeah, and stick them on eBay because that's now his day job. And um, he, uh, I said, well, if you, I said, why? Because you went, oh look at this. I've had to go and buy this, and I've had to go and buy that. And I was like, why are you buying them if you? are planning to paint them and sell them. Most people generally don't sell a game with an army, we don't sell a painted army with rule books. No. They just sell them up. And he went, because he said, because I've got enough of it to make up a decent size, I needed the ex extra books to see what was in it and what army renowns I could make to oh. be able to sell as a, as oh, like right. a okay. yeah, army. Yeah, yeah. So he said, so I've had to go out and buy more rule books to, to be able to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so when I said, well, then I suppose then when it comes to it and you sell sell the armies on eBay, so I suppose you just be selling the books off on eBay as well. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, so that was um, that was a bit of an interesting one to see that that's a thing there as well. Like you have to start sticking your hands in your pocket for other books for that as well. I still, uh, I, it's it's not something that floats my boat, and good on you if it does. The only thing that would have made me interested would have been if straight off the bat they went. There's going to be lizard men, and we'll use the Age of Sigma lizard men because they are look really, really, really lovely. And then as I got, eh, yeah, maybe, but and they went that then you know I think there's this real decision, isn't it, that if it ex exists as an Age of Sigma model, it mm. won't be crossing the the stream into being old world model. Yeah, they want to like the way they try to. You know, other than some vehicles and the occasional dreadnought, depending on how you, how flexible you are with your friends playing the game, what's thirty k and what's forty k mm. don't cross the streams into each other really, particularly. No. Which is one of the reasons why I think they've made a conscious decision to keep the marines a different size. Yeah, and uh, and I think uh, the old world feels a bit like that as well of uh, of sort of going. No, let's let's try and keep these as their own separate thing yeah which I I can understand especially because both sides start, of it a little yeah, bit especially because the problem is you'd have to start rebasing everything wouldn't you yeah if you'd been playing it if you'd been playing it Age of Sigma and then went do you know what I do fancy all the world and they go well yeah you have to do this to get that and, you know I don't know so it's um, yeah I'd have been tempted if they'd been doing Lizard Men because I'd like an excuse to maybe play Lizard Men I really do like them but as they're not I'm thinking uh, you know 
it's like everything in Games Workshop. I'm quite happy to pick up a box, have a look at it, and give it a nod and think that's cool, or you know, yeah, it's nice that it's out there and somebody's making the most of it. Yeah, and please, yeah. Them, but yeah, I thought, uh, yeah, there's not enough to inspire me to, to go to it. And also, as well, I think if I'm being honest, I played it. It was the first thing in Games Workshop I ever played was was Fantasy Battle out at a friend's house, and I didn't like it. No, I couldn't all that shuffling around on trays. It just wasn't my. I just don't think I was bright enough for it. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm being utterly honest, I and thought, it's, oh, yeah, that's oh, it. wheeling yeah. it right. Oh yeah. no, you're all right. No thanks. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it was a bit. Mm. Yeah. So, but generally, I think this for this talk show. I think uh, and looking at it, I think Games Workshop. Thumbs up for a really good white dwarf. Thumbs up for. The idea that you're going to keep going forward with combat patrol and also as well a big thumbs up for getting the scouts and the striking scorpions out to people as quick as they are doing i think that's a real yes. a real real improvement yeah I think. massively yeah yeah because yeah, so if, if people are struggling to get the limited release like boxes ideally you want them to follow up with the sprues really quick and they yeah. have so that's well, the, really the, good. the only thing you know is follow up with the sprues really quick and then for the love of god try and keep them in stock <laughs> Well, yeah, which that is which is which isn't an easy task. Yeah, which is it sounds definitely like half, half yeah. the battle was getting the scouts out quick. The other half the battle has been able to go into somewhere and actually blind the damn thing. Yeah, the, the best yeah. I, I can imagine they're going to sell a lot. Yes, of scouts. Yeah. Um, another thing, want to uh, talk on before we start winding down? Did you see the Henry Cavill interview for Argyle? No. Somebody mentioned... There was a reference about Warhammer, Warhammer right? Because the internet he, went into meltdown again. He, uh, yeah. uh, do you know, it shows you how bad I am that he, the, the, he went into the, he went into meltdown. Valrak got extraordinarily excited. Of as, course, yeah. As Valrak has wanted to do. And um, it, <laughs> he went in and he said, oh, so Henry, I've just got to ask, you know, I know you're here for Argyle, but I need to talk to you about, I want to talk to you about where Warhammer is at. And he started talking and did sort of a close-up on him. And two things that my brain immediately went, oh, that's a nice haircut. And I do love that jacket. <laughs> <laughs> and then went, oh, he's talking about Warhammer. <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, so, the th you know, I, I thought it was lovely that he said that things I thought was quite interesting considering a man who's played Superman at least, what, two or three times now. Yeah. Things to then say, it's a pivotal moment in my career. I thought was a really... You know, that's a really interesting choice can, of words, isn't it? I can... Yeah, maybe. Because, I mean, he's producing it. Mm -hmm. He's got. He's So he's heavily involved. So I think it's like pivotalising, I get to really put my big boy pants on. Exactly. And if it's successful and mm -hmm. turns into some kind of, like, you know, cinematic universe, I think that could be... You know that could that could set him up for like a super duper long time, and yeah. he'd be heavily involved in it for a really really long time because he hasn't had the most amazing track record in in like like Argyle. They he was in the trailer like loads, yeah. and I haven't seen the film, but I've watched like the pitch meeting and yeah. um and all that kind of stuff, and it's like oh yeah no he's he's like you know the mm, like and he's he's not in the film like all that much at all can i just sidebar on that in, spoilers <laughs> uh, is that in a way i'm really chuffed that argyle's not doing very well because i don't want it to become a major success and one of the reasons I don't want it to be a major success is because people are quite influenced by people in good movies things yeah. take off yeah and i spot this massively as a barber Oh right. right, okay. Like fo and footballer haircuts, etc. Footballer et cetera. haircuts, yeah. and uh, I did a lot of Brad Pitt's cut when he was in Fury of that big long bit oh, through the top. Oh right, yeah. The sides cut short, and like I say, footballers, musicians, and all the rest of it. Um, I, I did a lot of that choppy, slightly overgrown uh, Tyler Durden haircut from Fight Club. Yeah. So loads of it really does come through, and you know when. I started seeing the photographs of that. I was thinking, oh, don't be a success because I really, really don't like flat tops. They're really not an easy cut. No. They're a really difficult yeah. cut to do yeah. really well. And I was sort of, I was sort of praying, <laughs> I was praying it was going to fail because I thought, if it's suddenly this, if this becomes like the best selling movie of the year and everyone loves it, 
and I have to start doing bloody flat tops. I'm going to be gutted because they are a nightmare to do. I'm not not the big. Everyone's got a haircut they don't like doing very much, and I'm not a big fan of flat cut tops. So I was like, no. <laughs> You're mullet man. <laughs> yeah, I'm big mullet man. Yeah. <laughs> when it sank a little bit, it was like, oh, thank Christ for that. But um, yeah, but he's a funny one, isn't he, Cavill? Because you think he should be really more successful light, than really he is. Liked. Yeah. Generally, everyone, generally, pretty much everyone really likes him, but he doesn't have really major successes. No. In a weird sort of way. You know what I mean? I, I, although I have seen the trailer for the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare, yeah, which I think that, looks great. That looks fun. Really good. Yeah. And uh, and a Guy Ritchie can turn his hand to a really good film. So um, I was like, yeah, the, you know, he only says this by a pivotal moment in my career. I was thinking, I haven't I seen how some of your last movies have gone. Maybe you mean that on a few different levels. <laughs> but a thing that I really liked was the thing that he said, which I think is definitely... I felt, or maybe unintentionally, a shot across the bow of uh, The Witcher, but was the fact that he, he, yeah. he said, I can be faithful to this, I can be yes. faithful. And, yes. and I think all of us that are willing this to do well, whether it does or not, you know, this could either be the beginnings of multiple series on Amazon across a whole range of different aspects of 40K, and it could end up on the cinema. You know, I think we are... We are, and I hate to say it because I, I, I never want to admit that it has happened. I think we are in a bit superhero fatigue. Yeah. You know, I think Marvel's struggling a little bit. It's made me actually, which is very rare. I didn't think I would say this, but it has made me sort of quite hopeful at James Gunn's wrestling of the of the DC universe into hopefully something new and a bit fresh works. Yeah. Because God knows it, the DC universe in the past hasn't been all that. Because so, yeah, I haven't watched a Marvel film in ages. No, we've just seen on on Disney Plus that the Mar Marvels has arrived. Oh right, so is, that, is that uh, Captain Marvel? Captain Marvel two. Yeah, basically with yeah. friends. Yeah, Captain Marvel, yeah. Miss Marvel, and um, oh, I can't remember the name that the uh, the lady that was first introduced to us in yeah. the One Division series. I can't remember what her. Um, something superhero. Marvel yeah probably <laughs> her super near hero name is uh, it's like Photon or something like that I can't remember oh right okay. but, um, but you know they haven't been great and I think maybe maybe there now is space for a quirky a quirky gothic I think so sci-fi yeah. franchise and the thing that I think will give potentially if people take to 40k they might take to 40k off the back of Dune because I think yeah, June, yeah. June is in that sort of same neighbourhood. But I think um, when he said faithful, I thought, is that a bit of a shot across the bows at The Witcher? Because he sort of walked away from The Witcher, didn't he? Because it, yeah. it was massively moving away from Being, the books that you know yeah. he is slaved over reading. Yeah. And I think that, you know, and Cavill was massively instrumental in getting The Witcher off the ground, I think. Yeah, because season three, I only watched like a couple of episodes and I stopped. My wife's currently watching it at the moment and she's doesn't seem to be hugely no impressed. no so um but i think she's and watching that's it. that spin-off series that they had was awful oh it was dire wasn't it yeah it was dire do you know what it looked like it looked like a very very well produced bit of cosplay <laughs> <laughs> a really good fan film yeah yeah it was yeah, yeah it was yeah. yeah she can be a bit hit and miss as well can't she michelle yo Oh, she can be in some really good stuff and then she can be in some absolute howls as I well. guess yeah lots of actors can be I guess yeah. can't they but yeah she, Michelle Yeoh was in um, is it The Brother's Son or something there's like a, a, yes. a Kung Fu series yeah, on Netflix watched, yeah. it's great is it good yeah, it's, it? it's, oh, right, it's okay. really good um, okay Michelle I take it all back I yeah I had it on uh, I'm like pointing at my second monitor <laughs> that no, no one can see um, whilst I was doing some admin and um, just to you know fill the fill the void and um it was great. Yeah, I don't, don't get me wrong. It. I don't mind the subtitle because I watched a lot loads of Scandi Noir. But is it in English or is it? In, uh, it's in, in, in it's, a mixture. Is yeah, it in a mixture? because cool. the one of the main characters. There's like two brothers. This isn't spoilers. Um, there's two brothers. One is like a gangster from, um, like uh, you know, Asia. The other one, they were kind of like separated when they were younger. The other one grew up in the US and like wants to be an improv actor and <laughs> that's a great he speaks that's a great start like they all speak English but like he doesn't speak 
um, like Mandarin, Mandarin yeah. yeah um, so he has only like very limited conversation or so like you know you'll wander into a room and this big gangster guy will be like and he's like I got back like three words what then is and all that kind of thing so and some of the fights are really cool oh cool but this isn't a movie podcast is it no well I'll put that on the list yeah but yeah if you know if you're if you're listening to it this far you probably watch stuff so I'd recommend giving that a watch and it's and it's not um, Michelle Yeoh, she's not because she's in stuff, and she, oh, cool. she she has like one fight scene. Oh, okay. Um, so it's actually you get to see like some some of her acting chops and stuff, um, which is really cool. Well, and it's um, quite local. Everyone knows most mums have more than one fight a week in the, in, <laughs> in martial art fight a week in the yes, in, norm, in the real world. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. You know. yeah. Um, so yeah, no, it's good. Yeah, but yeah. I enjoy it. But, I, I think yeah, Warhammer. Even though it's it's, it's something I someone. Asked me what it was on. I was guested on um, uh, Narrative Wargamer podcast, oh, yes. and um, one of his questions to me was was like, "Why why do you like 40k?" Um, and I was like, "Oh crikey, like I'm terrible on the spot." And then I was like, thought about it, and I was like, "I think I like it just because even though it has all of these fantasy elements, you know, there's an alternative hell dimension and yeah. space wizards, and there's all of these fantasy elements, but it all still feels like quite grounded and quite real. Yes. And it, as much as you can, it does a really good job. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the thing I like is that I think, <laughs> I think it is to some degree. I, I always like is the fact it's human beings left unchecked and what yeah. mad nonsense will just end up getting yeah. involved. In, yeah. You know what I mean? You go, and when, when we've been through as much as we, they have of like you know earth being basically like a blooming desert and weird gangs and clans and all the rest of it yeah and then all of a sudden although i do wonder why he waited so long the emperor reveals himself and goes I've, i'm yeah i'm your <laughs> spiritual leader who's gonna put everything right that's, go that's and, like a somehow palpatine return yes. kind of situation isn't it you, yeah. go, you know what i don't mean to be funny but you know if you've been around since dot why didn't you maybe you know when global yeah. warmer was becoming a bit of a thing why didn't you jump in then yeah why have you waited yeah. this long yeah. <laughs> i waited until it couldn't get any worse yeah and then i decided to yeah. reveal myself yeah when the human race is scattered across the stars and it's not going hugely well I thought I'd wait till some of them were back to the point of bow and arrows and spears, and then I'd come and turn yeah. up the fake things. Go, what yeah. have you been doing? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just sitting about. Yeah, you know she's, she's, I've you know. had this Rubik's Cube for thousands of years. I've been desperately trying to yeah, figure it out. Yeah. Now I've done it. Yeah. Let's get on with some other yeah. stuff. You know? Yeah. So, um, yes, I think uh, the madness of what humans can do when they're, they're not being looked after, yeah, I think, is part yeah. of the joy of it. Because uh, I, think, I think for me, it's you certainly from the books that like the audiobooks that I listen to from Black Library it's everything's quite grounded you know you'll have um, like Comis Arcane or we like oh no I've met this like Slaneshi demon again good job I've got Jürgen with me right yeah, yeah let's shoot her in the face I'd really love a cup of tea <laughs> like yeah. it, it, that that kind of thing it's it's every you like yeah gods are real what about it yeah, like yes, can, can yes. i not just crack on with my job yeah yes, um, yeah you know what i mean yeah and, you know and and that for me like if if that element comes through into the show then i think that'll be really cool yeah like yeah, it, as think, long as yes, there's some, right. i want some human stories like uh, like not necessarily like space marines will be really cool i really hope you see them but i hope that you know if there is a main character like or, or whatever that, that there's some really solid like human I'd like, I'd like the idea that the idea that as we've said this before that you know whenever you have a space marine for me on the telly on the big screen whichever mm. it goes to is I want it to be in the presence of someone that's not one yeah and I think it would and, and I know humour is a hard thing to do in 40k I know Kane does it quite well but um, I also almost think that space marines would be a little bit more impalatable if the person who was with them was almost sort of stood behind them as they go Brother, we need to do this yeah. and this, and we've set this plan out. And yeah. This, you know, the person behind was a bit like, "Oh God, they're so oh, yeah. dull yeah. of this lot." You know what I mean? Because you, 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 you get a bit of that in in a one of the cane books, um, and we've been told off for it before. Oh, my camera's overheated. I'll have to put a picture of like a goose in there again or something. Oh yeah, I like the geese. Um, geese pics. Yeah, yeah. Yours is still yours is still good. That one doesn't overheat. That doesn't overheat. It's that model of camera. <laughs> 
Um, but f- when I use it for painting, it's, fine. it's absolutely fine. I accidentally left it on all night and then it came back and it was like, yeah, it's fine. But for some reason, when it's plugged into this, it's just like, no, I don't like it. <laughs> um, um, yeah, it's no, it's too much. Um, so yeah, one of the cane books, he, because ah, he, he talks about, no, it's not spoilers, but well, yeah, maybe if you don't know all of the cane series. Yeah. So some cane spoilers, stop listening for a few minutes. Um, he talks about how he worked with the Reclaimers Space Marines oh, and right. how he saw Terminator armor. Reclaimers. No, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. Just got gla- w- glasses on over the helmet. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I'd love, I'd love the, the, the Proclaimer Space shout, Marine, shout, and they're just like marching along. <laughs> they're well known for getting to battle really quickly. Yeah, yeah. They, <laughs> on uh, foot. They only walk <laughs> yeah, five hundred miles, and then they just stop. And, and then own, and then five hundred miles, well, yeah. and that's it. Um, <laughs> they have to fly the rest of the way. Um, so the yes, reclaimers. He talks about the Reclaimers uh, and how he's seen like. Uh, you know nids rip apart terminator arm and this that and the other so but they they do like a a, a flashback but like the books aren't released in like chronicle order yeah chronological order of his life yeah. so because they've talked about this story and referenced it one of the books you go back and it's him going on a space hulk with the reclaimers yeah and you you all that backstory gets filled in and it's it's really great because they're essentially tracking down a space hulk yeah and there's it, it enters this planetary system and the humans are sort of like oh like could could you not <laughs> it, it's going to attract like loads of loads of baddies and we just don't want the trouble yeah. but because they are the reclaimers spoilers they like reclaiming stuff yeah they're just like no like this is what we do. Like yeah. <laughs> we don't, we don't care. Like what, who cares if there's like Tyranids on there? Cause they don't know what's yeah. on there. And they were like, what if you release loads of Tyranids and they kill the planet and then a high fleet comes and they were like, yeah, but we might get some like secret stuff. <laughs> we're going on there. <laughs> and, and they do a, a great job, even though, you know, it's Kane and it's funny and, yeah. and all that sort of stuff. They do a really good job of, of, really describing like he talks to the space marines and um like they have great relationships with the tech with the tech marines um i'm just gonna check no one's at the door sorry everyone um yeah and they like he has he he does like some dueling with the tech marine uh which is really cool and then the other marines start to warm up to him a bit and you're like oh maybe they're all right and then and then like the human leader of this planet is just like please don't accidentally like release anything and they're just like (laughs) go away human there's treasure um and 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 they do such a great job of of doing that and 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 you're like oh yeah they are space marines are a bit different like they're all they don't care no, the massively single minded. As, single as much about like the human race as the to honor the chapter and all of the yeah. things like the history of everything. And it's like, well, no, we, we would be going against our code if we didn't yeah. have the opportunity to reclaim stuff. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, like I thought that was really, really good. Yeah. yeah and, I, and, I, and I think that's it. I think you always need to, you'll always, if you, for me, portray space means you'll always need a human eye yeah yeah we need to, like someone in the background it, it like henry cavill's just like no i must do this blah 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 blah, blah. <laughs> and then it just cuts to someone going oh, like he always does this <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh like off you pop yeah <laughs> good yeah. luck yeah you've like there's no use trying to talk him down he just won't see it um <laughs> you know what they're like when you get it on them yeah <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Um, and they get like this <laughs> yeah yeah and so i think yeah that if that comes across um i think that would be great yeah, yeah. i yeah i you know i'd be it's it's really wonderful is the fact that we know we're getting 40k and i love the fact that in a weird way we don't know what we're getting mm-hmm. is also a joy you know i don't personally think because everyone's going oh are we going to get horus heresy are we going to get the prime marks and i go if you hired unknown actors to be the Primarchs it it wouldn't have the same clout but I also think as a new project in what is a very unusual franchise Mm. to try and sell it that if you know this thing people keep doing my you know my favourite cast of 
of Primarchs, what actors would play them. Yeah. No, whereas we did it, but we did it as biscuits. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we did the sensible option. What was it? Going, what was what was um, Fulgrim? A, a jammy? No. A, a chocolate a, a finger, chocolate a finger, finger and, and a, a party ring. ring. Yeah. <laughs> and just don't think about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, you know. So, but I think you know, you, you know, the budget of going every Primark has to be like either a top level. B level actor or yeah, a low level yeah, A level actor, yeah, yeah. you know, because you, you go and you know, going well, it'd be Tom Cruise and Brad Pitt and well, you know, and you go, no, that's never going to happen, no, no, you know, and you go, and I think, and if you, unless you hire really good, talented actors from who are mainly from the stage and things like that to be your prime marks, I think you're really going to have your work cut out to do Horace Heresy, and I also think. Horus Heresy, although weirdly, yes, it's almost the beginning of 40k as we know it, yeah. is back there. But I also think, you know what it's like? It's like Rogue One. Mm. Rogue One is the events before Star Wars, yeah. but really only makes a lot of sense if you've seen Star Wars. Even though it's set before it, yes. it makes more sense already have, knowing Vader. Yes. Because if Vader, yeah. the first time you've seen Vader ever, was in a back to tank. Yes. Yeah, you as were opposed, like, who's that? Yeah, yeah as they, opposed to yeah. coming through the door on, they, on the Tantan they, as, they assume knowledge. Yeah, it's assumed which knowledge. is safe because it's Star Wars. Yes, and um, I think Horus Heresy is the same. I think mm, Horus Heresy makes better sense if you know where it ends up as yes. opposed to following and get from the beginning. I yes. Think and I think... So I That's think a good point. Horus yeah. Heresy further down the line, if, you know, it all takes off and they go, actors are literally queuing up to be in it, then crack on and do that story but I think starting Eisenhorn Gaunt something like that or even a brand new character but in that universe we know yeah. would be would be great and the yeah. thing is I'd quite like to see Kane because I don't th I think Cavill has some reasonable <laughs> comedy chops that he doesn't oh, get yeah. a chance yeah, to yeah, use massively, yeah. and I yeah. think in real life he comes across as quite a witty chap I, I, don't, I, I, I don't think he'd do Kane no I don't think he, no. I think he wants something far more grandiose yeah he'd be that. like the emperor or something well he wants yeah. to be doesn't he want to be one of the um, because there is army doesn't he want to be one of like the, oh, the, the top flight characters in the custodian oh he? right yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. but um, yeah you know but it would you know boiling it all back to where it started it's just nice that someone said I'm this is important to me because it has been since I was a child. And, you know, do you think how easy when you're him, ridiculously good looking, loaded, <laughs> you go, I now, when I'm not now making movies, I spend my time with supermodels and fast cars. And I like the fact that he now goes, you know, yeah. I still spend my time with beautiful women, but also toy soldiers. Yeah. You know, it must really mean a lot to him. Yeah. If he's hung on to it, yeah. with all of the yeah. distractions of being a multi-million dollar earning superstar can have, yeah. that he still loves this. Yeah, yeah. It feels like it's in safe hands to me. I certainly hope so. Yeah, yeah, yeah I certainly I think hope so, so. Because I think the great thing is Amazon will have learned the lesson that Netflix didn't, which is if you don't take this boy seriously and let him run with the thing that he loves, he just goes. Yeah, yeah. I feel like like with Superman with The Witcher, he's been screwed over quite a bit recently. Yeah. So um, it'd be great to... I'm, I'm super excited. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, me too. Anything else? Um, I mean, I've been doing some airbrushing recently. You have um, indeed. You've been a right little airbrushing Trojan. A little bit, a little bit, but um, I, yeah, I, I won't go too much into it because there's, there's a few more of the bits and bobs and some more videos in the works. But um, I've had, I've been having a whale of a time um, trying to unscare myself of using airbrushes, um, and I got very kindly. Uh, well, I made my uh, I'm scared of airbrushing Warhammer. Uh, had a breakdown, ended up with... <laughs> um, crisis. Yeah, ended up with, with a slightly orange-looking Imperial Fist. Oh, it's but a nice I think it works. Um, and somebody watched that video and got in touch with me, and that was a guy called Warwick from Harder and Steenbeck. I've heard of them, um, Thomas. Yeah, which was very surreal. Um, and they very kindly sent me an Ultra, which is like the, the new um, like 2024 airbrushes, um, and I had a little lesson and, and did some stuff and then 
um, yeah, I've been having a blast. It's been really, really fun. I know. We, you know, we've got that many airbrushes now. I'm going to literally have to really, I'm going to have to pull my finger out and get, yeah. and get learning how to do it. Yeah. There's that many of well, them. I, the, I assume we're at the point we have that many now we're, that when we go and pay for our lunch, we're going to see if we can pay for it in airbrushes because <laughs> we've got that many of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, fish and chips twice will you take one of them yes but the the new not sponsored um, or anything but the new 2024 Hodder and Steamback brushes are amazing yes um, like just chatting to chatting to Warwick um, chatting to Byron about them and Byron of Arthur Sopus for those yes, who don't know yeah, and um, I love games yeah they're so good yeah they're so good and the Ultra I think is from from chatting to those guys they were like right you've had negative experiences with the airbrushes because you've filmed yourself doing it <laughs> um like this is the ultra this we designed it to remove those negative experiences so one thing i i really like and i, I think is is genius in terms of i'm gonna sound really pretentious but like the synergy between technique and product and they're kind of smushed them together. So Artis Opus, you have your dry brushes that comes with the dampening pad. It comes like with your texture palette. Yeah. You have everything you need, but then you're told how to do it yeah. and, and to make it work. Mm -hmm. And what Harder and Steenbeck have done is they've made a great brush, but with that, like it has this little collar on it and like different settings so you can't pull back too far so it's mm -hmm. like it's designed for you know for miniature painting and it has priming base coats and then like one two and three so it's like if you're going to do you know your first zenithal put it on number one if you want to reinforce it and get a bit closer do number two and i didn't know with um with airbrushing you know if i'm priming something how far away do i need to be mm -hmm. and somebody could go like oh you, ideally you want to be this many inches and pull back this far but then if you want to go closer you need to like pull back not as like, like they have all of these settings and yeah. and they've gone right fist away from the miniature a fist distance so yeah. you're like oh, okay cool right you're on setting two that's like three fingers um so having used it um, which will yeah come out in a video at some stage or might even be out at the minute. Um, it's it's like my fear of it. Like you know, I'm still perfectly capable of making mistakes and yes. and going. Oh, I have covered up too much of my shadows there, and so on and so forth. But it's been it's been a really really fun experience um, using a cool product, using a cool system um, that having been shown. I I was on a call for half an hour with Warwick and he was like cool yeah so that paint and dilute it this much and and it's great like like as a as an entry level system I think if you're looking for an airbrush I think like the ultra watch um one of Warwick's videos about you know dilute stuff 50 50 yeah always put your thinner in first yeah and that was really interesting a lot of people said that in the comments yeah they did first yeah one, yeah they? and and um because I was sort of like the the one sort of like downside of the ultra is you can't do like you can't bubble back to mix the paint yeah um because and again like and and i've i've absolutely done it um when i was chatting to to warwick he was like you know we want to remove difficult things or things that can go wrong and if you're bubbling back if you pull back too much it just like spews spews out and i didn't tell him because it was super embarrassing um before the call i went to the bathroom and and i was like oh my forehead's covered in paint because <laughs> i just been <laughs> been doing now, that now I, is that is that a reason why there is pink on that knob on that on that stand for that camera um no i think i think i had my my hand was, was, oh, was I was going to go God, that in. really went yeah. that really went for it it's all the way over there yeah yeah um so yeah, no, I am a I am a messy painter, but um, yeah, I, I I learned that, and I was like, cool, um, and and then I, I was like, you know what, I'm gonna try and follow a coat of paint tutorial, like because they're quite heavy on the airbrushing. Tamiya paints through an airbrush. Oh. You can see why they oh yeah they go on about them so I, much. Yeah, because I was using inks, and I, I've been really struggling with inks, and people were saying, oh, you need to let them cure for for like 24 hours or something like that and i left some for days and then put contrast paint over them 
and they it just went through. And then I had some Tamiya flat white, which is trickier, tricky-ish to get a hold of at the minute mm -hmm. um, because it's all like people who watch calls of paint. I think so. <laughs> I think so. Um, and you 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 have to get the specific thinner for it, which also thins down other paints like exceptionally well. Um, and it is a bit more sort of solventy. Like yeah. you look at you know Lamia medium, and it's just like okay, thinner, whatever. And then you get, is it X20A thinner? And you look at it and it's like, don't breathe it, stick it in your eyes or even look at it. Like <laughs> this will kill you. Um, <laughs> but the the night and day difference, like like inks work well, but seem to have like other yeah. issues. Yes. Whereas I'm willing to put up with having to get another thinner because my God, like it's just so good. Yes. Um, and I can, I can absolutely see why. Like, I think I over thinned it the first time, um, but, and, or, you know, a bit too much pressure on the brush or whatever. But like, again, I think the system that Harder and Steamback have in place, like if you're a beginner airbrusher or if you're looking to get into airbrushing, um, I think, I just think it's brilliant because I said in the previous video that I did, I was like, you know, stuff's going wrong, but I don't know where it is going wrong i don't yes. i don't know what i'm doing wrong um to to make it go right but with the system that they have in place like with the brush and with the tuition um i've gone i've made a mistake and i can go oh that's because i was too close because mm -hmm. i'm thinning my paint paint generally correctly the distances generally correctly or, or whatever like and then i think i made like a couple of mistakes on that one uh I'm, I'm pointing i don't know where it is um oh yeah he's over there and it, and i was just lost concentration or or you know just kept the trigger down for too long yeah and all that kind of thing so yeah it's been it's been like a oh, you, you're in that i always forget the name of the curve where you you don't know anything and you're like oh i'm terrible and you learn a little bit and you mm -hmm. go i'm amazing and then you actually learn what's involved in everything and, yes. and, and then your confidence like goes back down again. And, and I'm, I feel like, you know, I know the scale exists, but, so um, this airbrush journey that you're on is just gonna, I can't wait to see where it ends. Just think how amazing you're going to be. <laughs> the problem be then is then that I'll, 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 I'll be out of a job because this love shut down and you'll just be working a call to paint. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> no. I mean like, I'm hello, Patrick here. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah hey guys patrick here um i'll have to i'll start the video like that um that'd be really funny um, i just hope henry hasn't got a trademark <laughs> <laughs> uh, no no but like like i've gone from having crap experiences and not know what's um not ha not being able to tell what's going wrong yeah to now like I can I can prime something and it looks great. I can put yeah. base coats down, it looks great. I can put zenithals down and and there's the differences now like like the 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 mechanics of it all works. So now I can as poncy as it sounds focus on the artistry and go right, I want that fade to be slightly different and well, I can do that now. Isn't that in miniature hobby and that's where we all want to be, isn't it? Is to get to yeah. the point where the artistry becomes the bit we're all with the bit that we 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 push ourselves in. Yeah. Because the rest of it is just become process, and we know it. Yeah. And you know, yeah. I think that's yeah. the bit, isn't it? You know? And yeah, because it like what they I think they've done really well with like the ultra is it's quite like a a structured system and a structured brush. Yeah. And like there's there's developments that they've done to make things easier for newer hobbyists like yeah. it has a dual action trigger so you push down and you pull back but in higher end airbrushes or any other airbrush um you can you can pull it back without pushing it down mm -hmm. so if you pick up an airbrush and you're like oh right dual action what you want to do is press it down and then pull it back to release the paint whereas what you might do and I, I, I've definitely done this where I've pulled it back first and then pressed it down, but you pulled it back too far and you just shoot loads of paint yeah. over your miniature. And I've absolutely done that. With the Ultra, they've designed it in such a way you can't pull it back unless it's you, pushed down. Oh, that's cool. Um, and, and, you know, you have the collar on it, which is, is all that sort of stuff. And it's a great... You can take it off, 
but it's just a great sort of way of it's like insurance i think yeah. like it for me at the minute that's the perfect airbrush like i've got an evolution as well and that will definitely be something that i'd like to like move on to but not yet like i guess i could learn to do it on an evolution um but i'm enjoying the ultra at the minute well this is so good isn't it because i think here we are you know two two videos in it'll be yeah and, and already yeah you're now at the point of starting to look at the joyful bit yeah more than panicking about how it all starts and I yeah think, you know yeah and i think you know following a journey of 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 sussing something out is, is you know it's yeah. a really good way because you know we're all you know i've not used an airbrush mm. at all and there'll be plenty of people who have used an airbrush it's gone terribly and they put it back in a box or they bought one yeah. and went good god how do i even start and i've never yeah. bothered so yeah you know being able to have, have the journey with yourself and figure it out as we go i think it's yeah really really good and, yeah yeah you know and thank you to thank you to warwick for absolutely time yeah with you. yeah it was it was amazing um he showed me like on the because oh, i love behind the scenes i love how things work um and i was like oh like i'd love to see the factory and, and everything he was like oh yeah well uh, i'm there now and just gave me a little tour on the phone oh wow. it was amazing yeah wow, it was wow. so cool um it was amazing and i think the yeah the guys at harder and steambeck like they, you can tell like these new releases because um, I've had the Squidmar Evolution from a couple of years ago yeah, and I really like that brush I've, I've only used it uh, like I haven't used it loads because mm -hmm. you know terrible and so on and so forth but the difference like that one is, is a brilliant brush and then they go oh yeah new and improved it's the next iteration and, and you're sort of like oh but how different is it gonna be yeah. and then i picked up the new evolution and was and we, you know did some painting with it and then going back to the old one you're like oh oh i don't like the way the trigger feels it's not quite as responsive like mm. it's like oh what is it Mar like marginal gains and yes, yes and all that sort of stuff the coolest thing they said was like i don't really know what it like means in terms of like processes and stuff but every airbrush company in the world you get a hunk of metal and you drill your hole through it yeah but you're going in with your drill and that is making the surface inside like because you have your spoil coming out the back yeah, yeah. and that's as it gets pushed out will put little bumps and scrapes yeah yeah abrasion yeah, yeah in there and then if that in relation to cleaning an airbrush makes it a bit more difficult because paint's going to stick in there and it's mm -hmm. going to be difficult so what these guys do now which apparently they're, they're the only company to do so they drill the hole too small and then go in with a diamond tipped kind of like turning tool wow and then make it bigger and the surface is perfectly, perfectly smooth. smooth oh wow so the without sounding awful and is there no you know you can see why they cost the money they cost yeah yeah and and like like that kind of dedication so they do all that so cleaning is easier because paint doesn't get stuck in there yeah and um like yeah it is like a precision like tool it's it's awesome well it's made, uh, yeah. definitely made me start to become more excited the thoughts of figuring it out now yeah out. yeah because because now i'm like I don't want to use a rattle can again. Um, <laughs> like, uh, like I absolutely get it. You know, getting into airbrushing is is expensive. It is an expense. Yeah. Um, but you know, now I I would because oh crikey, here the weather's crap at the minute. Yeah. It, it's it's like a wind trap outside of yeah, of, of the office you go yes. out and you're like which way is the wind blowing and you just turn around in circles forever yeah and go i'll just spray into this corner yeah. um so i, I like I, the accessibility of rattle cans is is always going to be easier than airbrushing yes but i think um like now i can prime miniatures i can put a base coat on i can put a zenithal on and then glaze it like I can do all of that like quite confidently thanks to like not my skill but like the education and the like the system that they all have in place everything works really well together which has been quite fun yeah it's been a learning experience and yeah. a very fun one um yeah yeah it's good so i'll put more videos of me being terrible at something and then hopefully <laughs> someone will come along and be like duh, 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 duh. um no <laughs> use this brush instead or whatever yeah so 
yeah cool. that's been my fun so so I think that's pretty much us do you reckon I think so yeah just like to say a big thank you to all the Patreons it's been lovely that you uh, have given us some lovely support over the last few days thank you so much and thank you for watching yeah yeah, yeah. it's been amazing and um, we'll, uh, yeah got some got some cool cool guests coming up soon so yes um, yes yes yeah. we have yeah, yeah yeah I'm really quite looking forward to that so see you soon fellas ladies bye bye